So thank you all for joining. Um, we're gonna, like as I said, this is gonna be a recorded session um, on integrated pest management for schools. My name is Jeff Severn. I'm a program manager for the Wichita State University Environmental Finance Center, or EFC. Um, so during the next hour, you'll learn some more about the basics of IPM, which is you know, a preventative approach to pest management that can help reduce exposure to toxic substances and improve air quality. And although we're fo focusing on resources for green schools in Kansas and Missouri, um, no matter what state you're in, uh, whether you're a school custodian, a facilities manager, an administrator, a classroom teacher, I think you'll find something useful in, and applicable to what you're trying to accomplish in, in creating greener, healthier schools. So this session is hosted by the Environmental Finance Center um, at Wichita State University. Um, and we are one of now 12 regional multi-environmental media EFCs across the nation. And we serve Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, and Nebraska, and the adjoining tribal nations. Under a cooperative agreement with EPA, we provide a range of services to assist communities, especially overburdened and underserved communities, with environmental projects related to drinking and wastewater, to solid waste, um, air quality, greenhouse gas reduction, toxic substances, and other topics. So our mission is to build capacity for addressing environmental challenges. And we do that by providing service through leadership, facilitation, and technical assistance. Um, we educate on best practices. We provide professional development and support. We analyze and interpret data and regulations. And we develop tools and resources that help our communities. Through it all, we connect people. Um, we connect ideas. We connect communities. So through in-person and virtual gatherings like this, um, education, outreach, and trainings, we help form connections that in turn can help those communities overcome the environmental and financial challenges that they face. So we've got some great presentations lined up for this session, um, starting with Franny Miller, the Pesticide Safety and IPM Coordinator at Kansas State University Research and Extension. Um, and after that, we'll hear about some resources developed through funding from the US EPA, including an IEPM investigation that's added to the Green Schools program in Kansas, and some how-to guides developed for the Missouri Green Schools program. So with that, I'm uh, going to turn things over to Franny to get started. Okay. So as Jeff said, um, my topic today is integrated pest management. What is it? And I am Franny Miller, and I am the Kansas State University Pesticide Safety and Integrated Pest Management Coordinator. And um, we're going to start out by talking about if you're trying to learn about integrated pest management, we have to have a starting point. So what is a pest? And a pest is anything unwanted, troublesome, annoying, or destructive. And so the thing about um, talking about pests in school settings or different places is that maybe certain individuals have different um, ideas of what a pest is. So um, that's kind of something that we start out with. And so why should you care about integrated pest management? Well, there are problems that come with pests. First off, to a lot of people, they're gross. Think about a cockroach. A lot of people find them very disgusting. They create health problems too. So they can spread bacterial diseases. Um, your fly, if you have a fly outbreak, they can spread bacteria from different food items to other food items. Um, they contaminate the food. So if you have a cockroach outbreak in your school, and your cafeteria, they can contaminate that food item that you're serving to the kids. That's a particular problem. They're also a trigger for asthma. So if a, a student is particularly prone to having asthma and they have cockroaches or things like that in the classroom, that can cause um, some issues. Um, LCMV is a disease that is spread by mice, it's a virus. And um, and so it, if you have mice in your facilities, you know, it usually doesn't cause disease in most people, but it can cause a meningitis type symptom and 
like teachers or, or people that might be pregnant could particularly be prone to picking up that disease. And then they're also prone to causing damage to property. So um, they can, rodents can get into your facilities and chew your wires. Um, sometimes we've even had like, like a squirrel in a facility that chews up things and, and different things like that. So those are things that you need to think about. Um, so some particular problems that come with pesticides and children's health are that acute exposure, that means that you are just exposed for a short period of time, but they can cause in susceptible populations, they can cause asthma attacks and they can cause like flu-like symptoms. So nausea, um, headaches, those type of things. If you are exposed over a long term, they can cause things like asthma, cancer, some neurological damage, immune system damage, and some chemical sensitivity. And so those are particularly issues with if we're using pesticides in our schools on a continual basis. So that's kind of the reason why we talk about integrated pest management and how that can um, affect that. Uh, so then we'll go on to uh, managing pests responsibly. So what is integrated pest management as, as we set this stage? So pest manage, it, integrated pest management is a pest management strategy that is focused on long-term prevention of the pest. So we look at things like how can we prevent them from happening in the first place? So in a school, you might have ants coming in. Well, how can we stop them from coming in? Um, maybe we just need to put a door, you know, underneath the door. Maybe we just need to put a little door stop there to keep the, the insects from coming in. So those are things that you can think about. And then integrated pest management really focuses on regular monitoring. So we take, you know, we have bed bugs or something that gets into the school. We need to be monitoring for those and we need to put out sticky traps and we need to uh, collect data on where they seem to be prone to coming in, how you seem to be getting them and, and think about those things when we're talking about integrated pest management. And then it focuses on using a combination of tactics, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, but there's different things that we can do besides just using a pesticide. Um, so there is some prevention techniques that we can use, some cultural controls, some biological controls, some mechanical controls, those type of things. And I've got some examples of those here in a little bit. So integrated pest management promotes that you have to first know what the pest is. Um, in extension, we get lots of phone calls about what is this pest, but if you don't actually know what the pest is, if you just say you define it as a little black bug, there's lots of little black bugs in this world and you won't know how to adequately control the pest or what measures can be done to prevent the pest. Then it promotes that we use prevention first. So like I talked about, sometimes there's simple things that we can do, like we can clean up around places. We can um, put things in storage containers. We can do... Um, if you have rodent infestation, we can use metal containers or different things like that to help prevent the pest from causing a problem in the first place. And then it focuses on using non-chemical solutions first. So what, you know, what can we do in this situation? How can we prevent it? Um, that type of, of situation. And we'll talk about those solutions here in a minute. And then, um, then it kind of focuses on that you can use pesticides, but only use them when they're needed. So when the threshold gets to a certain level and there's nothing, the prevention techniques haven't worked, the other control measures haven't worked, then maybe we decide to use a pesticide, but we've limited the amount that we're using. And when we do use those pesticides, people are trained on their use and we're using them as they're labeled and tends them to be used. So um, those are kind of what IPM promotes. Some goals of integrated pest management are that we are 
intending to protect human health. So those issues that I talked about a couple slides ago, you know, we can help prevent asthma and different things like that by not having cockroaches in the building. And um, we can also reduce losses from damage from like the wire chewing and that sort of thing that can cause problems. Um, we can also in school situations out in the lawn, sometimes you deal with like um, pests out there. So you have moles uh, situation. Um, so those th things like that uh, damage our school grounds. Um, we focus on in reducing the environmental pollution. We also focus on reducing the exposure to pesticides. So by the fact that we're using less of them in confined spaces, um, we have less exposure. And a reduction of costs overall, when you look at the amount of money maybe you're putting into hiring a company to spray once a month, um, when we look at the cost associated with, you know, using the prevention techniques and all of that, um, it reduces the cost overall. So there are six uh, essentials to integrated pest management. First, there's education. So like today, this webinar is providing education for folks. Um, and there's lots of different things that we can talk about, different um, environments that integrated pest management's used in. Um, we have educational modules and different things like that. Um, it also focuses, like I said before, on monitoring. So you actually have to be in, you know, in the classroom and paying attention to things, um, that sort of thing. And then it focuses on pest prevention, like I said. So how can we keep these pests from becoming a problem in the first place? And then it puts a, a focus on selecting the least hazardous approach to how you're going to, going to be able to get, control that pest. And then um, it talks about pesticide use notification, especially in school situations. Um, schools that use integrated pest management have a, a notification system that they use to tell parents when they're going to use a pesticide and a lot of different things like that. And and some, some people will say, well, we don't use any pesticides. But the fact of the matter is that in most schools, everybody does use some sort of pesticide um, because your cleaning supplies are considered a pesticide. So, um, you know, in Kansas, really, I haven't seen any schools that don't use any at all. We might use limited amounts, but, um, you know, there's always something, uh, the, the solution you're using to clean the desk with um, when we had COVID and we had um, all of that, the, the solutions to keep the virus under control are considered a pesticide. So those are just things that you need to be aware of. And then it focuses on record keeping. So there's a record keeping system that has to occur and that's important in schools because it's often the teachers or the classroom folks that are seeing the pests um, or the kitchen staff or the custodian, those type of things. So they need to keep records of what they're seeing so that they can pass that up to administration who's probably making the decision about how to control things. So that kind of is important in that. Um, so in the school situation, I just thought I'd give some examples. So keeping pests out, some things that you can do or examples would be um, your doors and windows. So you're, if you have an open door, it's an invitation to having pest problems. You can have things like snakes get in there. You can have rodents get in there, cockroaches. Uh, if you have a light outside your door and it's open, um, lots of insects can flock to that. Um, if you have screens that have holes in them, that's an open window to, to insects. Um, and then if you have like the door jam there that shows, or you have people um, like in your kitchen bringing in boxes from outside, they can bring in cockroaches inside those, those boxes. You also have like kids' backpacks that insects can hitch a ride from home to your schools. And then you also have things like your, around your gas pipes, your um, water lines that come into the school if they're not sealed around there. 
um, a rodent or other insect can get through there. So those are some things that are simple things to keep pests out. Remove pests, food, and water. So problems are, you can see that, you know, you have this clutter or the food left out. Um, in the kitchen, you have uh, this nasty stuff that's running down the side of the cleaner. Um, and you guys would probably, I've been in several schools, like I've done this um, in other states where uh, it's mandated and we've went to schools and it's interesting, the teacher's workroom sometimes incites lots of problems um, because people have left clutter out or left uh, food items out and they wonder why they have cockroaches. And so sometimes there's those simple solutions like this where you can store things in bins or um, have your sealed trash cans. So it just needs a cleanup to control those um, and to think about that. Uh, removal of pest harborage. So, you know, this is cluttered in there in a storage room. Um, roaches get in that and then they, um, you know, basically go go to town and make more roaches. Um, the before down here on the bottom, you can see that it was just a cluttered mess. And after they cleaned it up, um, clutter, like I said, provides hiding spots and covers up evidence of a of a growing problem. And oftentimes you see one roach, you have a have a whole herd of roaches and maybe you don't notice it right off the bat because if it's cluttered, it's really hard to see that. So um, in your areas, your storage units, your like some schools have basements where they store a lot of stuff um, and it's moist down there. So th that incites a problem. So those are some things to look for. Um, monitor for pests, like I said, um, sticky traps are a good idea. Um, roach poop is a good indication that you have roaches, so you need to be monitoring for that. Report sightings in a pest sighting log and don't move the monitoring traps because when you move them around, then they don't necessarily, um, you can't keep adequate data. So you can like put those sticky traps in different rooms around the school and you can figure out where your pest problem is originating from because it will have the highest number. And so those are kind of some things to think about. And then um, creating an IPM plan and keeping proper records. So this is an example of the, like for cockroaches. And so you list your pest management type, you list your traps that you have, um, and if you have, you know, zero, then you don't have to do anything. You just maintain your course. If you have one to five per month, then it talks about what you're going to do and how you're going to do that. Um, if it reaches 100 plus a month, then you're going to use a professional. And this outlines what you're going to do, um, what administration is going to do for each insect that you have a problem with in your school. Um, and so teachers will keep pest sighting logs. Um, uh, whoever's supposed to monitor the traps that's listed in there, um, what the IPM recommendations would be in each situation. If you're using a pesticide, you have your material safety data sheets, and then you also record your pesticides that you're using. Um, and then in that uh, record keeping, you put any notifications that are sent out to parents, and you have um, an IPM policy that states what you're going to follow. Um, and that's kind of just gives you a basis for what um, schools might have. And then number six is treat your existing pest problems. So we will be using traps and baits if necessary. It outlines what you're going to do. Um, no one is to have pesticides in the school. Um, don't be surprised if the pest control company stops by in your classroom. So this is this is talking about if you have a pest problem in there um, and you know that that the pest control company will have somebody stopping by to look through the monitor and monitor the traps if that's how you um, contract it. Um, you can contract with companies that do integrated pest management and they monitor things for you instead of just coming once a month and spraying. So you, you can do that as a school. Here are the components to integrated pest management that I talked about a couple slides ago that said we would get into there. 
So there's different types of control measures that we talk about. So cultural are things that you like do to, um, you might do like rotation. If you had a, if you had a school garden, um, cultural control would be crop rotation. Like you, you move your plants around. Um, things like that, that you can do culturally in your practices. Um, it might be like you use some traps to monitor um, things or we clean um, up the storage unit uh, and get it back to normal. Physical controls um, and mechanical controls are more like you do things that exclude pests. So like uh, a physical mechanical control would be that you replace the screens on your windows because that's intended to keep them out. We replace the door jams to seal them, seal them up tight. We put steel wool around the holes in our exterior building. We have somebody walking around the building and checking things out. Um, schools have had trouble with like birds. And so we go around and we make sure that, you know, the birds can't get up into the eaves, um, those type of things. Uh, chemical control is the use of pesticides, um, different products. And so that's actually a control measure. Biological is the use of, um, you know, something that's living. Um, so like um, ladybugs, if you had a greenhouse that your kids, your students used and you had aphids in your greenhouse, well, you might use ladybugs to control those. Um, in ag, we say, you know, we chickens, will, chickens and guineas will eat your ticks. So those are examples. Um, Biorational is the use of, of like fung fungus and, and bacteria and those type of things to control certain uh, specific pests. And then you have legal components to IPM. So that's like when we're talking about, you know, you legally have to notify parents um, when you use certain products, have somebody um, commercially certified if they're an employee of the school and you're using restricted use products and um, things like that. And then the education component, like this webinar and different things, just educating people about integrated pest management and about ways that you can prevent pests from becoming a problem. And so what are the benefits of integrated pest management? Um, well, you have reduced use of pesticides. Um, IPM as a whole tends to be safer because we're looking at the prevention, we're looking at everything as a whole and kind of creating a plan. Um, it tends to be a really effective pest control measure and it tends to be friendly to the environment. So those are kind of our puzzle pieces that go together in integrated pest management. And just as my last slide to kind of bring this all together, um, these are just some resources that are available in other places. Um, we have the the pest events for healthy schools it used to be called stop schools um and it's a national initiative and so this is the website and they have um web it's not webinars but it, it's an actual like module where they have modules for education for our custodians for our school nurses for our um, maintenance people and what they may come into contact with as it relates to IPM. So like in some schools, you might use um, integrated pest management for your football field and your outdoor track and those type of things. And so how do we manage that football field to keep it green um, without using a lot of herbicides to keep the weeds out? So, you know, there's different aspects to where you can use it. And so that Pest Defense um, has it specifically for each, um, like I said, custodian, uh, nurse, and you can take the little module on it and learn a whole bunch of information. And then um, our program did an in integrated pest management card deck. And so we took cultural controls and we took uh, biological controls and we took pesticides and we put all the things together into a card deck that you is the, that's actually a playing card deck. Um, and you can like use that to help educate your students or um, other people in a unique way. And so that's the website that they're available on. 
Thank you so much, Franny. I'm going to turn it over to Laura and Rachel. And I guess just a little bit of context as part of our um, cooperative agreement with EPA, we were able to get some additional funds this year to um, help develop some resources related to IPM. And so the next two presentations you're going to hear are from the Kansas Green Schools and Missouri Green Schools um, about those resources. So take it away, Casey. Thanks, Jeff. Um, I'm Laura Downey with um, the Kansas Association for Conservation and Environmental Education, which is a big long name, and um, wanted to give you just a little bit of background about our organization and program for those of you who don't know us. Um, we're an older organization and um, we have been around since 1969. We do statewide environmental education um, in the state of Kansas, and that includes doing professional development and networking, um, doing leadership development. We have an awards program, uh, including one that Rachel's going to tell you a little bit more about, and um, resources, including um, the one that we'll tell you about today, and direct support, and of course, our Kansas Green Schools Network. So, um, Rachel? Yeah. So our Green Schools Network um, represents about 500 different schools across the state of Kansas, and we currently have about 19 different school districts. And what's really neat is on our website, which is kansasgreenschools.org, each of those little green dots represents a green school. And so that is their actual profile. So you can click each of those green dots and you can see more of the details of what that school is doing um, as far as being a part of our green schools network. So it's a great way for schools um, to really interface with one another and make those connections. We also have five different investigations and one of them we have um, the amazing Jenna Sims who's going to talk about um, the IPM plan within the healthy school environment. But the five areas to investigate with our green schools investigation are number one is energy. And so with the energy investigation schools and mainly the students are diving in and they're really looking at um, how they can save um, energy within their school. They're collecting data. How much does it cost to light their classroom, the school? Um, what is their carbon footprint? The next one is waste and recycling, which is where they're looking at where their waste is going, um, composting, waste alternatives. The water investigation looks at not only water quality, but water conservation practices and water quantity. The healthy school environment we're going to dive into in just a second. And the learning community really looks at the school grounds, um, school gardening, and is a really fun way to get kids connected into their local community. So as Rachel indicated, um, We've got these five investigations, and when Jeff approached us um, with um, from Wichita State to um, utilize some uh, funding from EPA to integrate more um, integrated pest management, we looked at the Healthy School Environment Investigation, which really does focus on um, indoor air quality in the schools, reducing asthma and allergy tr um, twigs, triggers, <laughs> um, transportation impacts and chemical use. And so it, it seems like a natural place for us to go um, to integrate um, a deeper dive into IPM. And our approach um, was to again, put the students up front and center in terms of doing the investigations in the school. And so we've developed an investigation. I'm going to pop it into the chat, hopefully. Um, we've developed an investigation that's written for um, students and teachers to use um, in their schools. And the first thing that they do is learn about what is IPM. Um, they look at what common pests might be found in schools and what the school currently does to um, address their pest, uh, pest issues in the schools. And then we send the students out to collect some data. So they're really looking for evidence of pests and they're investigating throughout the school um, very much as Franny was um, 
talking about to look at both um, direct and indirect indications that there may be pests um, and also to look at where there are some places where there might be some trouble spots that they might want to address and then they're they're looking at some different practices to essentially to reduce habitat is um, from an environmental education standpoint for unwanted pests in these problem areas so um, for example if they're finding um, <laughs> they're finding droppings in the cafeteria they're looking at how can we tighten up um, the way that food is stored and not having um, having trash cans emptied out regularly and making sure that there's no ways for pests to get in um, all of those good things um, and they develop an action plan that they share with their school um, uh, on how to do a better job having a, a more healthier approach to dealing with the pests that they might find at schools. And then the final component of our investigation is an at-home investigation so that the students can then um, go into their homes um, and take a look at how they could do a better job of integrated pest management at home. And I think I'm turning it over to Ms. Jenna now. Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me okay. All right, so this is one of my favorite things to talk about is Kansas Green Schools. Over the past year, um, it's kind of transformed the way I've taught in my science room. And I'm a, um, a first or fourth grade science teacher. So I have the opportunity to teach these kiddos science every day. And um, this has just been a great integration um, into what I currently teach. So this fall, we started with a healthy school environment. And part of that was the integrated pest management. We didn't start there though. We actually started with um, the outdoor air quality and it gave my students some, um, some experience with actually data collection. Cause you know, at the, the age that my kids are, data collection isn't something that maybe we would do on a regular basis. And so we started with the air quality and our transportation. And, and then lastly, we did kind of the integrated pest management data collection last. And so, you know, we got out our clipboards and our paper and we made graphs and um, we went on an adventure around our building and that was a lot of fun. We actually did it on two different days. And the first day we focused on class for classroom exploration. So, you know, they were looking um, behind the shelving and underneath the desks and behind the, um, you know, the waste baskets and all the little nooks and crannies. And so we actually found more than I thought we were going to find. Um, and, and I let me back up just a second. Before we did the integrated pest management investigation, we actually interviewed our head of maintenance and he gave us some great answers first about what we might be looking for, um, what, what type of system that we use here on our campus, um, what we actually spray for and when we spray for it. So our kids had a little bit of prior knowledge to what they might be finding when they went into the classrooms. And then um, that was fun. We went into all 16 of the, the classrooms and, um, and of course the kids that I had, they were, they were fourth graders. So, you know, they said, oh, I know right where, you know, the dead spiders are in my classroom. So, you know, we uh, for sure got, you know, with the students that were familiar with their surroundings, of course, we probably found a few more, but um, then the second day we actually went to our basement and kind of the ulterior, um, spaces in our school, not just the main classrooms. And so that was even more eye-opening for the kids because as you can imagine, our basement isn't finished here at our school. And so, you know, it's teacher storage room, it's it's the copier, it's all the all the um it's where the chemicals are all stored, it's the vacuum cleaners. So it's where a lot of critters were found. And so there were some sticky pads and you can imagine the kids reaction to that. And so we actually um, were able to find a lot more when we went to the basement, which was great data collection for them because they could count all the stuff on the sticky pads and, and collect that data in a graph form. And then, um, you know, I let, even, even though these were just fourth graders, I let them um, put it in the formal, I, I let them do it on a paper and pencil report. And then I put it online into the healthy school environment investigation formal report. Um, but then, as we finished our healthy school environment just yesterday, actually, we the kids put all of their findings together and they made this great, it was on Canva, they made a great little presentation and they gave it to um, our head of school, which is a picture right here to the right. Um, and you can see it in the background, it's integrated pest management. And 
just some things that they found and they shared with our head of school or it would be in a public school, it'd be more like a superintendent. Um, they shared with our superintendent the um, findings that they, they had and our head of school was so impressed with them. Um, and he's gonna follow through with our head of maintenance on a few things. And he even um, took note of our action plan and a couple of the things on our action plan he's, he's gonna follow through and do himself and then allow some of my students to educate the rest of our campus on um, best practices. So it was, it was a great, it was a great um, investigation for my kids. And I think it's a unique because they like to go looking for creepy crawlies. So, you know, they get, they get to find them and, 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 and put it in a data form, which is always good for our students. So. Thanks so much, Jenna. That was awesome. Wonderful. So we have had um, two schools so far this semester since um, launching the integrated pest management plan, um, the investigation. We've had two schools go through the process and what Jenna said was pretty much right on the money with uh, the schools really enjoying, or at least the students uh, really enjoying being able to be free and really go do these investigations and do something a little bit different. Um, so it's just been something different, unique, and fun. So what else is very exciting is that as schools are completing these investigations, when they complete um, their first two investigations, then they're able to receive recognition, um, which is the Kansas Green Schools of Excellence Silver Globe Award. And that's where we'll actually go to a school and we'll present them with a flag, which um, we recently got to do that um, with uh, Jenna Sims's school, which was a lot of fun. But then what's neat is as schools continue to complete more investigations, then they get to earn higher levels of recognition. So moving up to the Gold Globe and ultimately the Green Globe Award. We also have the Kansas Green School of the Year Award, as well as we have schools that have been able to submit for the U.S. Department of Education's Green Ribbon Schools Program, and currently we have five schools in Kansas for that. So we wanted to say thank you so much to Mrs. Sims and all of her hard work that she has done. She's an incredible example of leadership for her school and the students. And then also we wanted to say thank you so much to Wichita State Environmental Finance Center for funding this particular project that we're able to implement. And I am Rachel Wally and the Green Schools Director for the state of Kansas. So if I can support any of your work, please feel free to reach out with questions. Leslie, I'm going to turn it over to you now. All right. Well, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Leslie Moylan, and I am with the Missouri Environmental Education Association right next door to Kansas. And yeah, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our green schools program here in Missouri, which we co-manage with the Missouri Gateway Chapter of the U.S. Green Building Council. And then we have a lot of different partners, um, and you'll learn about some of those. But um, what I'm just going to try and go through in the next 10 minutes here is our, our definition of a green school, introduce you a little bit to our green schools program here in Missouri, and then explain how IPM fits within it, which we've already heard and learned a little bit about, but I'll kind of reinforce that. Um, and then share with you about our guides that um, Wichita State helped create um, for our program and how you can access them. So um, first off, I just want to kind of go over what, what we mean when we talk about a green school, um, and we've hit on it here. I think Jeff started with it. It's it's green and, and healthy. Um, it means a lot more than taking care of our environment. And so things like clean air actually impacts how well kids do in school um, and how healthy everybody that is in the school building a lot is. Um, and we know that when families have clean and safe spaces to be active, they're going to have more opportunities to maintain a healthy weight and lifestyle. Um, and that when we work together to take care of our spaces, we nurture community connections. And what Jenna was talking about with um, talking to their head of maintenance, that's one example of building that community in a school where a kid feels like this is my space and I'm a part of, of taking care of it, which is as important as some of the other aspects. But so when we talk about a green school, and this is kind of the common definition across the country at this point, is we're talking about schools that are working in a comprehensive way to lower their environmental impact 
improve their health and wellness, and then also um, increase sustainability literacy. And so schools are working on all three of these realms at the same time and really working on kind of like a culture shift so that all of these things are important. Um, in Missouri Green Schools, we've got four levels of recognition. Um, the first couple are really all about honoring those that a school's commitment to being greener and healthier. And then as they get higher and higher um, in recognition levels, it means that they're, they're progressing in all three of those pillars and they're able to document that with their stories and with data. Um, and it can, a lot of it can be collected with kids. So in Missouri Green Schools, how schools get started is they start with an initial baseline assessment. And actually in here, one of the first questions on this is just, do you have an integrated pest, man pest management um, program at your school? So I love that, that that's something that is a new term for a lot of people. So just when schools start out with us, they learn about it from the get go. Um, and then they gain, they also, they build a green team. And I wanted to share this because um, there might be some facilities folks here. And we have learned that it's really important that you've got multiple perspectives on your team. And so facilities folks are really, really important because things like the green cleaning products and all of these um, pest management products really impact how healthy a school is. Um, so in addition to have having these other roles represented, uh, facilities is really important. And then, you know, what we heard from Jenna really kind of underscores how kids can be involved in this too. And so teachers are, of course, <laughs> really important on a green team. Um, another big piece about our program that I wanted to share with you all is that we partner with the Green Schools Alliance to um, use this online dashboard called the Sustainability Roadmap and Tracking Tool. And this is where schools track their achievements. It's a survey and we have partnered with Green Schools Alliance to have a, a data collection form for each one of their 50-ish metrics um, that schools can add more information than just the yes or no question that's asked on this start tool. The start tool is really kind of you know, self-reporting and then our integration with our Snapchat forms, our data collection forms really help schools go deeper into telling their story so that we can recognize them. Um, and it's also a great way to get resource, get ideas, and then access a bunch of different resources. Um, and our how-to guides are there. So I wanted to let you know that. So um, before I dive into our resources, I just want to kind of reiterate what are some of the benefits of green schools and Integrated pest management impacts a lot of these, the health and well-being, um, the student engagement. You heard it from Jenna. <laughs> um, it can, and I think Jeff brought it up, the cost savings, um, or maybe that was Franny. Um, and then teachers, um, their satisfaction goes up. And I feel like it's kind of amazing. Just all of these points were made by the people that talked before me. Um, I mean, Jenna said that her teaching was transformed since she joined Kansas Green Schools. And I believe it because, yeah, when your kids are excited about what they're doing, you're more excited to be up at school too. Um, so how exactly does integrated pest management fit into our program? This here is just kind of a breakdown of the three pillars that I mentioned that schools are trying to, to move the needle in all three pillars. Um, and it's really clear that it's, you know, integrated pest management is under health and wellness. Um, it impacts the indoor air quality, and which in, impacts health. Um, and we know that it can also impact um, the health of the environment you, by reducing our pesticide use. And then um, it's kind of funny, I didn't know y'all were gonna bring in Jenna, but I'm so glad you did because I was gonna say, it's very clear that this is um, impacting the environment and health. But when you engage students in it and you you know let them go on a treasure, you know, a hunt to, <laughs> to find evidence or find um, weak, weak points where pests might get in, um, they're learning so much um, and they're, they are increasing their sustainability literacy. And then being, you know, a part of, a, a part of that data collection, it's, it's sustainability literacy, but it's also a bunch of different other subject matters. So um, that is kind of how this all fits in. And I'm gonna show you now, I apologize for my screen. Um, I wanna show you the two the two um, guides that were created 
by the Environmental Finance Center folks from Wichita State. Um, we worked together to create this. And this is what I love about these is that they're one pagers front and back. So, um, and these are our first two that are like, out in the world. <laughs> <laughs> they have been birthed. We have a, like another dozen um, queued up, but these ones are finalized and formatted. So for every one of the, the metrics that we have for schools to kind of evaluate and plan, um, there's an opportunity to create these how-to guides. And so each one has just an indicator of how costly it is on a scale of one to five. So according to this, um, it shouldn't cost you more than it, it shouldn't cost you very much at all to to create um, an, a, a policy or a program. So both of ours are really more on in, instead of student investigation side, this is more um, school leadership is going to, to be driving this um, and hopefully bringing kids in in the same vein that Kansas has done, but pretty low cost medium effort, but look at the, the high impact. I mean, this is an important topic. It is not the, pardon me, the most sexy topic that people talk about all the time, right? Um, but we learned during COVID, indoor air quality is a big deal. And, you know, Franny brought out how important this all is um, to our health and to our kids' health. Um, so anyway, um, each, each one of our um, guides is front and back, lots of additional resources that you can tap into. And like I said, this one is really about um, developing a policy um, and beginning a program if you don't already have one. Um, so then we have the other one. So that was really for indoors. And then there's another one that is all about your grounds management. And so again, if you're trying to share this with folks on your team, these could be really good resources for you to give them something that's not overwhelming because there's a lot of resources out there, but a lot of them are like, hey, we're 30 pages long. <laughs> and that's going to shut some people down real fast. So I really, really appreciate what um, Jeff and his team did to bring this really big topic, big, broad topic um, down into something that's um, manageable to kind of look at and 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 get a grasp on pretty quickly. So, um, and I, I think some of those resources that you talked about, Franny, are, are linked here too. But um, so how can you all access these? I wanna show you that. Okay, so if you enroll in Missouri Green Schools, you would get set up in this sustainability tracking and roadmap tool, like I mentioned. And this is just basically what it looks like if you're inside it. And so if you were to go in here, each one of these squares represents a metric. And number 36 and 40 are the ones that we have attached to IPM to. Um, and so if you were to click on one of those, you would take a survey question and you could click learn more. And then down at the bottom, you're going to see there's this guides and resources button. And if you clicked on that, it would take you to their website where they've got multiple resources for that metrics. And ours is one of them that lives right there. And so people can find ours, which is short and sweet, but then they can deep dive onto these other, um, some of these other resources as well. Um, so that's one way. If you're enrolled, easy peasy. If you're not enrolled in Missouri Green Schools, you can also access it through the Green Schools Alliance um, website without join without being a member of START, but you do have to log in, you have to join and create account. Um, so I would highly recommend it if you're working on green school stuff. There's lots of discussions and it's a new, it's a new spot in the, the interwebs. <laughs> I think you would, there's a lot happening there. Um, so that's where you would access it if you wanted to just go there and join. It's a, about a 24 to 48 hour lag time. So um, it might take you a couple of days. Eventually we will have it on our website. It's just not quite ready yet. Um, but then also you could certainly just email me and I would send you these hard copies for sure if you were interested in that. Um, I think that was really the main thrust of what I wanted to, to add on. Um, you can certainly email me if you'd like or call me with questions. I'm Leslie, again, um, my colleague Hope Gribble is also listed on here. Um, we both eat, sleep and dream about green schools. So we'd be happy to talk to anybody about it at any time. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Leslie. And thanks uh, to all our presenters. I know I learned some new things about IPM today, and I'm excited to see how these resources are, are going to be used in, in Kansas and Missouri going forward.
just to thank our funders, the US Environmental Protection Agency for supporting this project. Um, they provided the funding for these green school investigation tools, but um, and have, have also just been really great partners on this initiative in general. So uh, thank you all for, for watching. If you have questions about this project or you wanna learn more about the EFC, feel free to contact me or my colleague, Ryan Vonsack, who's um, worked on this project as well. And you can also visit our website at www.wichita.edu slash EFC. Um, as I mentioned at the start of this, we'll be putting together an IPM section for our, of the website as well. And um, I'll share that link out.